I don't know if that was the right choice. Don't follow me for advice, follow me for the entertainment. In 2019, we moved from a quiet hill country, two and a half acre home, to a flat, new build on a half acre with no shade, no privacy, that was just a Bermuda grass desert. Now to help with this transition, we used some of our savings to splurge on my dreams of an orchard that I envisioned providing so much shade and food that I would just be overwhelmed within a couple years tops. We contacted the landscape company to come design and plan this backyard masterpiece in January of 2020 and signed on the design by the end of February. So the scheduling started in March and we all know what happened in March of 2020. We were very lucky for how we fared through all of this, but at the same time, I watched as the timeline moved from April to June to November to January of 2021. We also watched as the cost of fruit trees and lumber, because we were building the pergola at the same time, started to go up and up and up. And we watched our budget stretch thinner and thinner across what we wanted to do. The next up, we have my Texas persimmon. So once again, persimmons are supposed to be pretty, pretty forgiving on how you prune them. I actually haven't pruned this all that much. And being a Texas persimmon, it's native. So it's not quite as unhappy with the weather as other trees have been. Now, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to do anything? Let's look at it. There are some low branches that I want to, I do want to encourage this to grow up a little more. So I think I will prune some of uh, these little tiny branches down here. <laughs> but then a month after we planted these poor little trees, snowpocalypse hit Texas in February of 2021. And for the three of you out there who don't know what snowpocalypse is, that was where we went down to an absolute frigid four degrees for us. I know that a lot of you that's not frigid, but for us it's unheard of. And I did my best to mulch, wrap, and insulate these trees, but many of them still died back to the ground. Unfortunately, many of the trees that can handle our hot 110 degree dry summers just aren't fans of getting that cold. Oh, I see one. First of all, this branch looks dead. Do you see the splitting on this branch right here? I don't like that. I'm going to cut that off. To add insult to injury, this freeze came only two weeks before our last frost. So some of the more cold hardy trees had nice and warm feelings inside and were already starting to bloom, like my peach and pear trees. The peach variety I picked was supposed to be hardy down to 10 degrees. Um, so I wrapped it with a pool noodle, mulched it to the base around the graft, and uh, sent it a little good luck sign in hopes to protect it. Do I cut this guy? Do I make this one shorter? Do I leave it as is? We'll cut it. We did it. Here. And what happens is when you trim it, these nodes that you see, node here, node here, will determine the direction it ends up growing. So which way do I want it to go? Probably towards me, right? The fig tree took quite a bit of damage in the freeze. It died all the way back to the ground. It was probably seven feet tall before the freeze. There was also quite a bit of animal damage from squirrels and rats and possums and crows and who knows what else that ate all the figs and nibbled on the branches after the uh, freeze of this year. So once the tree had gone dormant. So I cut off quite a bit just because I didn't trust some of the new growth to really grow into much of a tree later so it can just grow again now my hollies have fruit on them these are my yapon hollies they have fruit on them right now we will leave those alone and prune them once the fruit is off 
I'm trying to get them to grow more tree-like as opposed to shrub-like. And this one is the second best or second worst, however you want to look at it. And then I have one right there that's the best in terms of tree-like, and one over there that is the worst. So this peach tree died all the way back to below the graft point. And I can tell because you can tell where the graft happened and it grew around it. Um, so this that is coming up out of the ground is not the peach tree that I planted. This is from the root ball. And I am aware that is probably something not great tasting from what I hear. So I'm not planning on letting this go and becoming my main fruit tree. But I do want this to get nice and established and healthy again so that I can graft onto it. Forgot to hit record for this, but basically we trimmed this down to being an open center with five main branches coming off of it. So trimmed off the big one coming off the top just to keep it open. And then we now have one, two, three, four, five main branches. And eventually, once I figure it out, I'll probably do some type of bud grafting onto this tree. So bud grafting is where you replace one of these buds here with a bud from another tree and then that shoots off a, a new branch with new genetics. So here is my pecan tree. We are not going to be pruning it today. I lied. We will be pruning it because I don't want these lower branches down here to get established. Y'all see these down here? So we had a leak right about there and then the water slopes down this way and so I think all of the water was just constantly on this tree let alone there's about six inches of mulch that was placed down and I think that's way too much I think it was just sitting in water non-stop and the trees like moisture but not that much so hopefully I'm gonna give it some compost give it some nutrients hopefully we don't have weird weather this year it can get nice and established. And then I will take off these supports probably once I see some growth coming off of it, at least one or two of the supports just to help it get some strength and not get choked out. And now for my pear tree. So it is budding. It is definitely time to prune it. It just keeps growing straight up. And I feel like that's gonna be too, too vertical of an angle. I think ideally I'd have these branches out more I know I can have some ties to help it stay down and encourage the branches to go out, but man, it is just growing straight up, sending all the branches up. I guess it wants. It's a, I guess it's a tall. It's a tall guy. It wants to grow up. All right, go for it, man. There are some branches that are growing right here, close to the ground. I'm going to prune off. That one seems obvious to me. Here's one that I want to encourage. We have a branch coming this way and this way. And I am going to take the tag and loosen it. Asian pear. I don't feel like that's the healthiest of branch though, you know? So, um, I guess cut it. Here. Okay, so we have one this way, one that way, one that way. We'll leave this one, but I think I'll cut that one, and that one, and that one. So now I have one going each direction. And maybe I'll cut the growth tip of this on an outward bud to try to make it grow out. So maybe here. I don't know if that was the right choice. Don't follow me for advice on this. Follow me for the entertainment. Uh, all right, so this is our first tier. Wow, that didn't look healthy at all. Okay. Make this a little cleaner. First tier of one, two, three, four. 
move up, we'll make this our second tier. Uh, I don't know the answer, but this doesn't look like it. Now again, you don't look like the answer either. You don't look like the answer. So if we look at here, we have one coming out, one going left, one kind of going right. So we'll try to encourage it to go right a little more, maybe cut it here. Um, and I'm not sure which of these are gonna win. I think I'll just do that. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, all right. So I think this is growing a little too up. So I'll try to make it go out by cutting it there. Same with this one, a little too up. I want to make this the main leader. And so this I want to go out. So maybe if I cut it, on a bud that faces the direction I want it to go. So here, yeah, there we go. Now we have one tier, another tier, and I guess the third tier up here. So if that's the third tier, then this would make it kind of in between. So, extra branch? Is that what I'm hearing? Is it bad that I'm hesitant to cut it because it looks healthy? What if, uh, what if I just cut the growing tip? There. Now maybe it will grow this way. And next year, if I don't like it, <clears throat> I can come back and cut it off. Here, well, this is our third tier, so we'll have this come this way. That one go that way. You are not wanted. Um, I don't know what is, this will probably be the top of the tree. I should probably cut and force it to branch out here and not have it continue to get taller. That's about six feet tall. We're above my height of reach at six feet tall. So I think we're gonna encourage branching at this point. So maybe you go out. And we have one going that way. That's ugly, man, that, that is so ugly, okay. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. And, um, bam. Bam. Right. Your tall vertical pear tree just got even more vertical, but I think that should give us a nice chance, nice chance. I mean, ultimately we have, once again, we have one tier, two tiers, three tiers. <laughs> now, down this way, look, here's Holly, Japan Holly, number three, that is a mess and nowhere near a tree. Down here we have my orange trees. But I've never seen any fruit from and I'm not actually sure what type of orange it is and it could be a grapefruit. Um, but at least this year they're alive. Last year they died all the way down to the base and this is the back of my house so there's tons of weeds, leftover toys, and we aren't gonna mess with this today. 
we're just gonna let these guys grow and see what happens because this is all just experiment I know that these are these are quite thorny probably have sour fruit but at this point I'm just curious what fruit they have and if I can get orange trees to fruit and if I can get these to stay alive longer than one season in our winters we have I'm gonna graft something on it and then I'll protect it. So thanks for following along today with what was most likely my ugliest part of my backyard that looks the worst. My trees are so miserable and I feel so bad for them. So send them your love, send them your, your good weather, send them all of your thoughts and prayers that they get good nutrition and start to grow this year. So with that, have a great day and God bless you.